Greetings, folks, and welcome to Mac Geek Cab 993 for Monday, July 31st, 2023. This episode is a little bit different. I am actually sitting here in, I was going to say alone, but not really alone because Lisa's behind me. I'm in a hotel room in New York, and uh, we are in the aftermath of Mac Stock, which happened out in Woodstock, Illinois, this uh, past weekend. I am here just doing a little introduction of what you're about to hear. At MacStock, we were able to do things a little bit differently, and we were able to get decent enough audio that that audio, plus a little bit of time and logic, allows me to deliver you what you're about to hear. We held the first Mac Geek Gab Caucus live on stage on Saturday at MacStock Conference and Expo. You will hear... About, uh, I don't know, 10% into this that I bother to think to introduce my fellow panelists. Yes, this was an oversight, but only so much as the recording went. It really speaks to what MacStock is and becomes because MacStock feels so much like camp. Everyone is together. Everyone is doing everything together. We eat together. We hang out together. There was no need to introduce People that had already been talking to each other all weekend long. So I will tell you, since you are not there with us, or at least weren't this year, maybe you'll be there with us next year, that on stage for the Mac Geek Gab Caucus, we had Adam Christensen, Allison Sheridan, Jeff Gamut, Pilot Pete, John F. Braun, yep, and me, Dave Hamilton, yours truly. So uh, you will hear all of us talk. I will explain in the caucus, what the caucus was. Sponsors for this episode include Hop Water, where you get to go to Hop Water, that's H O P W T R dot com slash M G G, and you get 20% off your first purchase. Of course, we will talk more about all of that uh, in the midst of the, uh, the episode here. But for now, enjoy. Uh, it really, first though, I want to. Give a huge shout out of thanks to Mike Potter, of course, for organizing MacStock, to Roger Harmon, who engineered the recording of the tracks that I was then able to mix. So thank you, Mike. Thank you, Roger. And of course, Brian Henson for being the speaker wrangler at MacStock, keeping the logistics moving, really just making everything possible. So thanks to certainly the three of them and everybody that made MacStock possible and everybody that was there. It was really a spectacular weekend. It was nice to get back after 2019 was the last time I was there. Really great. Hopefully you'll be there with us next year, but doesn't matter right now because we've got this to share with you. Protecting the microphone, yeah. making sure I, I, only those with the talking stick get to talk. That's right. I grabbed it. No, man, I am excited about this. This is not the first time we've had Mac Geek Gab at Mac Stock, but it's the first time we've had you at Mac Stock the right way. You did. It's true. You, yeah, you did. Yeah, we've been uh, off stage every other time where we, at, where at we the belong. Hampton. Like no. I said earlier, due to some clerical error, now it's here. So, so this is great. Dave put together just a fantastic caucus. I keep calling it around to a caucus of amazing guests from past Mac Geek Cab yeah. episodes. And you've got some great topics planned out. I was watching. I told you I was lurking. Yes. I was watching the email chain. This is going to be a, a really great presentation, everyone. I think you're going to enjoy it. Dave Hamilton, everyone. Amazing. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's, thank you. Okay. All right. So this is different, right? Because I realized as we were getting into uh, planning all of this, that there were going to be many of us in this room, all of whom had been on Mac Ekeb at one time or another. And I think I got it right. I don't think I'm missing anyone from the stage, but if I am, we're just going to leave it. Uh, and, and you have my sincere apologies and I, I'll buy you a drink. Um, but... I thought, well, wait a minute, you know, Mac Geekab just celebrated its 18th birthday. Woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. And so that means it's old enough to vote. And being old, 
being old enough to vote means it's old enough to do other things like vote in primaries and caucuses. And so why not then allow this to be our first Mac Geek Gab caucus? And we'll do it here at Mac Stock. We have, uh, I, I think I have, uh, yeah, there, there's some rules that I was going to put up on the thing, but it doesn't matter. So we will, we have a couple of other, oh, great, right. So uh, we uh, have a few topics that we have bashed around and uh, not at all agreed upon, which is perfect. Uh, and so we will talk through these. We will give ourselves no more than eight minutes per topic. Uh, we will speak in, we will honor the uh, the old tradition of the talking stick style, as Mike uh, alluded, which is that the person with the talking stick, and this is the talking stick, my dear panelists. You have your own talking stick. Well, I do. I do. And I also get to decide when the talking stick moves to the next person if necessary. But otherwise, feel free to pass it around. But uh, that way, it makes the audio sound good, because hopefully this becomes Mac Geekab 993, I think it would be 993. So, uh, but, but if the audio, if it doesn't work and we talk all over each other and it's a disaster, then it's just for us. And that's also okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, with that in mind, we will talk about these things and then we will vote and talk and, and decide. Each of us will, will cast a vote as to whether we are happier with the state of whatever the topic is today or where it was, you know, 18 years ago or sometime in the past. And our first topic is going to be automation. And before I start the clock, and by the way, it, it, because of the live stream, obviously the, the camera, the, the stream will mostly be on us. I spent creating a countdown timer in Keynote is no joke. It was it is a very manual process using build ins and build outs and a lot of replication. And so there will be a timer going, whether you can see it or not. I'm very proud of this. Uh, all right. So I got too many things going on here because I can't see that. No, we don't want to start the timer yet. OK, so the first topic will be automation. Uh, automation on the Mac, but we can say, well, it, it, some of the history of it. Apple Script started in uh, two, 1991 with System 7. Apple Script is currently at version 2.8, which was released in October of 2014. So that's interesting. Automator, though, was started in April of 2005. It is six weeks older than Mac Geek Gab. Uh, current version is 2.1 or 2.10. I'm sorry, from December of just this past December. And then shortcuts, of course, of course, started as workflow in 2014. Apple acquired it in 2017, and then uh, it was called Shortcuts in 2018. And then in 2021, it came out for the Mac mostly, but without triggers, right? You got all that? All right. So automation it is. And if by hook or by crook, who wants the mic first? So uh, nine minutes. Sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, Dave, to answer your question, I am overall happier with automation today, the state of automation today, compared to where we were in 2005. And that's because uh, in addition to, well, the, the, sadly fading away apple script we do have shortcuts and we we do have all these other little tools they've grown in such a way that uh, that we can now incorporate javascript in so that we can hook together things that we couldn't before also we have automation tools like ift and zapier so we can link together and automate things in ways today that that we could only hope for back in 2005. Thank you. That's Jeff Gamut. I, of course, for the listening audience, everybody here knows who's on stage, but we've got Pilot Pete, Allison Sheridan, Jeff Gamut, John F. Braun, and Adam Christensen here on stage today. So, woo and I'm Dave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will agree that uh, we've come a long way. When I tried to use Apple Script, whenever I was trying to use it, I would always run into a wall. Very quickly, I tried to do something, couldn't figure it out. Automator got a little bit farther, got a couple of things done, and then it would go, oh, you need to put autom you need to put Apple Script in there. But I'm actually not going to bring up, uh, in a nice way, uh, shortcuts. I don't, I don't like them. Every time I try to do something, I can't get it to do what I want it to do. But I am much happier in automation because of Keyboard Maestro. So... I am doing so many things like when we were we were on a tour of OWC and this guy was showing us the process they do 
to run a certain test. The guy opened up, uh, the, uh, he opened up the terminal and he put in a terminal command and he said, and then I capture that and I copy it and I put it into a text file and then I pull it from the text file, I put it into Excel and then we get rid of this one column. I'm like, I just turned to David and goes, oh, my hands are itching for some oh, yeah. keyboard maestro right here. <laughs> so I am definitely way happier doing tons and tons of automation, but it's in keyboard maestro, not in shortcuts. You didn't John? say I had to color within the lines, did you? Uh, no, not at all. No, I, th th there's no lines. Hello. So um, as a former, uh, as a software engineer in another life, I suggest that you all just learn the C programming language. And... <laughs> John F. Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I got to just drop the mic now. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't beat it. Mic. No. Um, uh, just want to offer a few pointers here. Um, Apple Script uses something called Script Editor, which can be used to do Apple Script or JavaScript, from what I understand. The thing is, it's not a very pleasant and it's a very text based environment, which not everybody is comfortable with. I do have a couple of things here, though. I did find something called Doug Script, that's a collection of hundreds of Apple scripts, and I found in my experience, one of the best ways to learn something is to get somebody else to do it and then learn from that or copy other people's oh, that's work. A great way to learn. Yeah. Um, another thing is that, yeah, again, as I mentioned, the uh, uh, script debugger is another piece of software that is a much nicer development environment. Um, as far as automator and shortcuts, uh, Kirshen did a great job of uh, telling us about shortcuts. Ooh. So I'm very happy with that. Um, I'm trying to think where to go with this. Um, we have other panelists. There, there is. No, I'm no, sorry. Yeah, no, 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 no. All right. Two yeah. other two other sources of information if you okay. want to learn about programming. So one is uh, Apple Developer Site developer.apple.com, go there. They have tutorials on all of this stuff and probably s sample code as well. So that's good. The other thing is that there is a book called like, Apple Script for Dummies. So if you want to le learn Apple Script, that may be another source of information. Thank you, Mr. Braun. All right, I can't believe I'm going to say this. I probably somewhat agree with Allison, but it's because of my own biases. So I really love shortcuts. I'm glad that we have it. I was very scared when Apple announced they were kind of getting rid of automator and scripting, and it was unclear if we were going to have any kind of automation. So I'm very, very happy to have it. I too get stuck with it. But for me, it's because I am a developer and a programmer. So for me, Apple script makes sense. It's just like, yeah. I can, I can do this. This is or JavaScript, as it were, too. And, I, and luckily, I think you can do Apple Script and JavaScript in shortcuts. And I have not played with that yet. So maybe that's that's my in there. But um, yeah, I often get stuck, especially with how they handle variables and some other things. And so Kirsten's advice about use variables. Very, very good one. If you will get stuck very quickly if you don't. So, yeah, but yeah. I'm probably leaning more towards Apple Script, I think. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I figure we're responsible enough to have two microphones going. Okay. So I, 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 I reserve the right to change no, my it's mind. mind. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> you fools. <laughs> so, uh, as Chuck alluded to earlier this Talking morning. Talking to the mic, Pete. Don't make Chuck. me edit. Bye-bye. <laughs> as Chuck alluded to earlier this morning, you could follow on or follow technology or get stuck in the past. If you are a developer, then all that stuff makes great sense. If uh, you can't figure out an if else then statement to save your life, open chat GPT and go write me a script that will do this for me and then tell me how to implement it. I'm telling you, it works. It's amazing. I've done two or three things with the website for my show. Said I wanted to do this. I wanted to figure out whether you're using an iPhone or Android. I want you to then help people subscribe. And it wrote me a script. I put it into the HTML code of the WordPress. Bang, zoom, boom, I'm a programmer. <laughs> What's nice with that is if you're using it for oh, you JavaScript. Say, hey, this didn't work. This is what happened. This is the error I got. Right. Oh, we'll do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, right, exactly. If it doesn't, you get to test in real time whether it's accurate. And, and then you iterate because it's actually pretty good at the whole transformative thing, exactly. the, the T. And you aren't stuck with Automator or Apple Script. This yeah, yeah. one happened to give me JavaScript. So, yeah. If you want to be a real power person, and I saw this in the shortcut demo too, there was some regex in there. 
Regex. Um, I don't know. No. 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 Yeah. No. But I gotta go. Like, if you, you can learn Regex, you can learn anything. Believe but me. But why do you have to? Chat GPT is there for Regex. You're good to go. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Do we have a uh, yeah, Allison? Do you have more to say on automation? All right. Well. Two minutes to go. Oh, it's fine. We don't have to fill up all our time. We just have a limit. It's not, yeah. So, uh, is, is anyone happy, happier with where automation used to be versus where it is today? Yes. Interesting. Yeah. So we have uh, Jeff Gamut and Adam Christensen voting uh, in the past. John voting in the past. So half in the past, half in the future, uh, or in the present anyway. In the present. Oh, wait, I'll take the present. I take the take question. the microphone. I'm happier with it now. Take, take the microphone. <laughs> Thank you. I'm bad at taking tests. I'm happier <laughs> with where we are now. Okay. All right. Yeah. Four to two. Four to two. All right. All right. Sweet. Where, where, what's the temperature in the room here uh, for automation? Are we happier? For those that are happier now, raise your hands. And, and those that were happier in the past, raise your hands. Okay. So some. Yeah, yeah. It's about similar. No, I, I, it's what you learned first, and th that's your native language. So, yeah. Amazing. Awesome. All right. All right. Hey, look, if you're like me, you enjoy a nice cold beverage when winding down for the day, right? It's summer and I have really been loving hop water. Hop water is this non-alcoholic sparkling hop water crafted with adaptogens and nootropics. You've got to try this. I uh, mentioned in the last episode where we talked about this that I had tried the lime hop water before and I think I had tried the classic as well well I finally got my variety pack and I was able to try the two other flavors that are in there so there's the classic the lime and then there's blood orange and mango they're all delicious don't get me wrong but that mango is something special I really have been loving this it's awesome and it's great when I'm out by the fire pit or really just hanging out or wherever it makes me feel relaxed, and it's hop water, H-O-P-W-T-R, and it's purposefully crafted to not have calories, carbs, or sugar, or alcohol, right? Therefore, it doesn't affect your diet, right? You know, and it tastes awesome, and it comes in all these fun flavors. It's great. Trust me, hop water is the perfect beverage to enjoy all summer long. I know you're going to love this. Right now, we have a special offer just for you because you're a Mac Geek Cab listener, 20% off your first purchase. Plus, you get free shipping when you order 24 cans or more. To get this offer, go now to our special URL. That's hopwater.com slash MGG. Again, H-O-P-W-T-R dot com slash MGG. Don't wait. Order today. Go now to hopwtr.com slash MGG. And our thanks to Hopwater for sending me this delicious stuff that I know I'm going to buy more and for sponsoring this episode. And while I got you here, I want to tell you about this awesome new daily podcast called T-Minus Space Daily. In today's high-tech world, where tech and business are rapidly changing, keeping up with the latest takes a lot of effort. And we're in a new space era, and space tech is everywhere. That's why the team at N2K launched T-Minus, the only daily podcast covering the rapidly evolving space industry. Every weekday, T-Miners covers the fascinating world of space technology, startups, and policy with analysis, intelligence briefings, and engaging discussions with prominent experts from the industry, from research organizations, and even from the government. T-Minus is the go-to source for professionals to stay at the cutting edge of the space industry every day. You'll get the news and analysis you need to stay at that cutting edge of what's going on in space and why it matters. Whether you're a space enthusiast or an aerospace pro looking to separate the signal from the noise, T-Minus Daily is for you. So go check out T-Minus Daily on your favorite podcast platform. And our thanks to the team over there for doing this swap with us. So the next uh, topic will be backups. And which, <laughs> which is um, interesting because... Why don't I have the notes? There we are. So um, in 2005, when we started Mac Geek Cab, we were all still using like third party software to backup. We were using retrospect, dedicated backup media, maybe, maybe even tape drives, but certainly, you know, maybe some removable storage, maybe back then, but probably we were probably had graduated from from that. It wasn't until uh, 2007 that Apple introduced Time Machine in uh, OS 10. Point, Mac OS 10 10.5 Leopard. Uh, 
And then uh, the time capsule was a year later in 2008, and it only had a 10-year tenure. It was end of life in 2018, which is fascinating. Yeah. And then uh, time capsule continued to evolve. Uh, sorry, time machine continued to evolve. In 2016, it got APFS. And uh, obviously, there are other third-party solutions and all of those fun things. And if I can remember what is in which hand, I will. And uh, so... Uh, Backups. Are we better off where we are today versus where we were back then or at some point in the in the past? Who wants to? Uh, John, you, you, yeah, go. Two items. Carbon copy cloner and super duper are probably the. Yep. We're getting some cheers here uh, are probably the two major backup yeah. programs. Uh, on the Mac right now. So I think we are in better shape, and, and especially Carbon Copy Cloner. Um, the other day I was doing some backup activity, and I used a charging cable, but not a high-speed cable, and it actually said, you probably don't want to do this because it's going to take a really long time. And I'm like, Carbon Whoops. Copy Cloner said this. Yes. Yeah, it identified the cable speed. Yeah. That's awesome. Huh. So that was awesome, but... um. Yeah, I think I think we're in better shape, and there are, you know, as as uh, David pointed out, there are online services now. Mm -hmm. There's the hybrid service from uh, Synology, where where you kind of mix the two for so, backing up your Synology, not for backing up your mm -hmm. Mac yet. Right? Yet? Yeah. 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 It's but but to that point though, we're using we were using third party software 18 years ago to back up our Macs. And now here we all are cheering about the third party software we're using to back up our Macs. <laughs> in my only years gripe later. with Time Machine is that you and I both wrestled with this, Dave. Um, they would get corrupted on a pretty frequent basis. Yeah. And it was very frustrating because you either, my strategy was um, unless you have snapshots, my solution was to actually take an old version uh, from my Synology and say, restore this back to yep. the compute, or re restore an earlier version, kind of like a snapshot does, and then that that solved the problem. Yeah, mostly it, network backups, right? Direct attached disks were not so much an issue with Time yeah. Machine. So I was gonna say, as a person, and anybody who's heard my show knows I am a fanatic about backup. I use multiple, multiple versions. Uh, Time Machine is the one that I tell everybody, if you're not using it, use it. Like, if you have zero backup, I think that's the, the solution it, it brought us. Is It's easy to do. You get a drive, you plug it in. Do you want to use this for Time Machine? Yes. That's all you have to do. You're done. You're backing up. Um, you definitely need to do more and should do more. So I use that. I use uh, Backblaze online. I use... Um, Chronosync with my Drobo still to back up specific to back up specific folders like my podcast. I'll get backed up to yeah, my yeah. Drobo. My Drobo gets backed up to Backblaze. That also gets backed up other backups. I use Carbon Copy Cloner. So there's multiple multiple versions. And so I think having all the options is great. But I you know no, I'm a huge fan of Time Machine. I've not had problems with it. I actually use Time Machine with my Synology for my family's computers because yeah. they won't plug in. Like I would do direct connected for them if I could get them to plug in, but they're on laptops. So they're like, no, that's too much of a hassle. So I set that up and I've not, I, I must be lucky because I've not had the corruption issue. I know Over the people in my audience yeah. have and, and I've helped people with it, but yeah, for sure. I love that you brought up Chronosync because I did that with my Drobos as well, but it was the excuse you had to use a Mac in between. So I, I was doing Mac to, uh, Drobo to Drobo. You had to have a Mac running Chronosync was the only way we could do it. But it gave me an excuse to buy a new M1 Mac Mini to do that at the time. Uh, but I want, I want to look back at, at, the, at the past because I want to talk about when it fails, what happens. And, uh, you know, Dave brought up Retrospect. Retrospect, uh, was it RetroBatch? Was that what? It, no, Retrospect was the, the app. It's the right. software. Dance was And the I remember company, yeah. I was all over that. I had a, man, I had that going. And then one day I needed it and it went, oh, no, I'm sorry. I can't open any of this. Yeah. I was like, wait, 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 no, 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 no. Yeah. But I've had to go back to Carbon Copy Cloner, and I've, I didn't even realize it does versioning that I didn't, I didn't know it did. I was like, oh, that saved my bacon, because so, I don't do Time Machine, so I don't have any versioning in anything else. 
And then uh, I've also gone back to my Backblaze backups and said, oh, I want to get that. Or the fun thing about having an online backup like that is when you're away from home, you can get something from your Mac. Yep. Because you just log in and go, it's like you've got online file storage of everything you own. So, so you... No, go ahead. sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I, I was going to ask you, you, you've talked about recovering things from backups, and it sounds like this has happened to you recently in a meaningful way, yes. not just an, I did it as an experiment. Yeah, no, I needed something. Yeah. I was like, oh, no. How, how many, has anyone else here in the last year, two years, needed to recover something from what you would call a backup? Absolutely. Jeff, you want to? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, you know how we can sometimes get stupid? Oh, yeah. yeah I'm, a, I'm <laughs> the master of that. Sometimes. 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 <laughs> and, and you don't realize in time to recover gracefully with Time Machine. And what do you do? Now you go to your backups. And, and I'm pretty, like... I don't know. Someone earlier today said I'm anal with my backups. I like to think I'm I'm paranoid about data loss. So I have uh, super duper backups. I have carbon copy cloner backups. I have backblaze backups. And uh, and the great thing is I was able to go to all of those to find the file I wanted. I, I was able to find what I wanted immediately, but I checked the others just to see if it was there, uh, which actually is an important point check your backups every now and then make sure they're actually doing what what you think yeah on the recovery question i can tell you that uh, i haven't had to do it for myself personally but i've done two full backblaze restorations oh. for clients that i set up one was a client who uh knocked her drobo off of her like desk oh, and that was her local backup but i had okay. set her up with backblaze backup so it's a process um you know to pull down a lot of data they will send you a drive you can do yeah, that yeah. option too but it's a little more expensive if you're willing to take the time and i had another one uh someone unfortunately lost their house in a fire and needed to do recovery and so i recovered back from them so, and that was so in, beautiful in all of these i'm trying to figure out if we need backups right uh it, like actively it in all of these scenarios, if if instead of all the backups that we all diligently do, if all you had was uh, all of your documents stored in your documents folder and let that be syncing to iCloud like Apple wants to do by default, would that have saved how, what to what percentage? Uh, zero. It doesn't you know. stop stupid, Dave. That, that's fair, right? Yeah, it, no, it I know. solves it solves the house on fire problem. Yeah. It solves the Drobo fell off the desk problem, but it doesn't solve Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> well, wow. yeah. wait. I, I'll also say that it dep it depends on how you're doing your storage too, because in this case, like the woman with the Drobo, she was a photographer. She can't keep everything in her local sure. storage, so a lot of the data was only on that drobo and, and then, then backed up to the cloud dying. so it, 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 with caveats yes yeah yeah with ca well that's the thing is yeah to what percentage go ahead so i say backups are for people who can't remember what they wrote or don't remember what the pictures look like i'm just saying <laughs> no and for travel for travel i actually keep a little thumb drive with me it's a little two terabyte thumb drive and i use my time machine to that on a regular basis now it's in the same. It's in the same vicinity. I've got two bags, so it's you know if I lose both bags, then I'm out of out of luck. But I also keep that with me, so even emergencies on the road, I'm good to go with a thumb drive. I, I want to give a a little hot tip here. Steve and I went to uh, Peru and uh, and the Galapagos. We swam with the penguins and we hiked Machu Picchu. Trip of a lifetime. Steve's backpack got stolen right before we got on the plane to come back. In it was his GoPro and his camcorder, and his MacBook Pro, and a backup drive. But do you know whose backup drive it was? It was mine, because I had swapped backup drives with him. Oh, Carry two drives, swap them, yeah. didn't lose the trip of a lifetime. That is Does that really, give you chills? Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> really smart. That's really smart. Yeah. We are, we are almost out of, we have eight seconds. Sorry, Steve wow. wants to remind me, everybody, his passport was in that backpack as well. Oh. We called it, we called it two bonus days in Peru. I was just going to say, you got extra time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Do we have anything that, more I to keep say? A photo, I keep a photocopy of my passport page so that oh. you can go to the consulate and yeah, go, hey, help. Yeah.
Yeah, there and you it, go. And it, 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 it did help. Yeah, it yeah, saved me maybe 15 minutes. Okay, well, you know, that's 15 I minutes. Do, I do want to follow up on what Jeff said. Sure. Is verification is very important. Boom. Yep. Time machine, if you dig into TMUtil, which is the time machine utility, there is a way to verify it. Yeah, and also, stay on the mic, John, please. And me. also Carbon Copy Cloner has a feature where it will compare the data from your local disk to the backup disk, and it will tell you. It, it, it makes it take a lot longer, but um, and I'm not sure about it. the other products. Yeah, no, I, I, I would say, so it, it's time to, time to vote. Are we better off where we are today? And, and I'm curious what, um, why we're better off today or, or not. So we'll keep it as brief as possible. But it's uh, I'm going to vote yes, just because we have so many more options than we okay. did yep. 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Yep. Absolutely better options than they actually work. <laughs> Yes, I'm backing up my words right now. <laughs> yeah. so, Dave, the, the deal is now we can automate basically everything we need for a backup. Back when we were doing the retrospect thing, uh, there were still things that I had to manually do. Yeah. And But now, yes, we are so much better off. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Do you one have anything more, to add? Wait, 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 uh, one second. Do you have anything to add to that, on. John? No. <laughs> <laughs> John and Ron. <laughs> yeah, I would say we're better off now, even probably even just for the pure fact that we have cloud. Because Fair. like back then it was sneaker net. You were you yeah. were hauling your physical media off-site somewhere if you wanted absolutely. to save it. Absolutely. <laughs> That's and I just absolutely right. No, or maybe a fire safe if you I, had a really, really good one. No, I would agree we're better off now. And it, I, it, cloud is, is one reason. But I, for me, the primary reason is restoration from backups is so much right. easier and therefore more reliable. I just I just remembered the reason Retrobatch was such a disaster was it was a database you couldn't get into. Right. We just have file systems that we can see in our backups now. Correct. Correct. Yeah. It makes a big difference. to us. Well, yeah, unless it's something else. But yeah. no, you can see Time Machine. You can open up a Time Machine disk, and then it's just a file system. I mean, it's a it's a oddly put together one behind the scenes, but to us, it looks like just a file system. So that's good. All right, good. Uh, yeah. So um, media consumption. This came up from uh, Brian suggested this, and I love this topic. So the. Uh, and, and I, we have had two yes votes. I'm not sure that the, the answer to this one will be a majority yes. So the question is, me, the, our access, was it better when we only had 75-ish cable channels, but at least they were all through one service and we knew what we had? Or do we like the choice and countless services from which we must now choose uh, that we have today? In 2005, we were on mostly cable and, I suppose, broadcast, which still exists today-ish. Um, one interesting thing, in 2005, American Idol held the number one and number two slots for uh, television programs ranked because they were on two nights a week. And so it was Wednesday and Thursday or something. And so Wednesday was number one and Thursday was number two or vice versa. Starting in about 2010, that number one spot shifted and it has basically since been owned by Sunday Night Football. But its viewer numbers have gone down. It's just that there's so much, the, the interpretation is there's so much more dilution that we now, uh, you know, they're, they're, it's hard to own that number one spot. Uh, iPhone was announced, obviously, in 2007, along with Netflix, Hulu, and Roku. In 2013, House of Cards was the first original Netflix series, and uh, and it, wins an, it won an Emmy that year. And in that same year, online video was responsible for over 50% of internet traffic. So this is 2013, so 10 years ago. Um, and then uh, in 2022, so last year, the most recent data we have, Stranger Things was the would have been the number one slot, but but so much but for for like not live sports, but because of all the dilution of the not live sports category. Sunday night football still holds the uh, the top. So 
With that in mind, with our ability to consume and the options from which we must choose and the paths we must go through now to simply sit and watch the boob tube, are we better off now or were we better off then? Do you watch the boob tube? I sometimes watch the boob tube. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm asking because this is actually, I get made fun of in my family because I am now currently the only person who watches stuff like on the big screen TV yeah. in my living room. Really? My children and my wife prefer, pains me, most of the time, their iPhone. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And I'm Did curious. So David obviously Lynch? none of you people are doing this either. Right. I buy that reaction. So, okay. I'm not the weird one. Yeah. No, sir. <laughs> anyway, um, all the different services, uh, and, and now I, I definitely enjoy them. I was never a big cable fan, so this one's probably going to be easy for me. Um, but for me, probably the thing that saved it, and I, I don't know if this was the thing that Steve was supposedly talking about when he said he cracked television, but I mean, my Apple TV, the ability to aggregate that, I go to the Apple TV app, I have, you know, all the services. Um, that I'm not so thrilled about. I wish it was not so divided up, but that's fine. It's working. Um, but yeah, the ability to aggregate that content, to just jump in and see all my shows, regardless of where they are, for the most part, yeah. yeah. Netflix, I'm looking at you. Um, and, and Plex can't integrate with Apple TV yet, yeah, yeah, despite Plex the, too, the fact yeah. that they want to. But yeah, that I, I love and enjoy, and that's sort of how I consume stuff. Yeah. All right. Yes, here we Jim. go. Yeah. We are so much worse off. It hurts. And we are so much better off. It's like ecstasy. <laughs> <laughs> we, are so, we are so much worse off because our viewing options have become so fragmented. Like you cannot keep track of where you need to go to find the shows you want to watch because it, in some cases this is available on broadcast television, but how do you get those channels? Then for other things, it's available only on a specific service. So now you have to have uh, Disney plus and Netflix and Amazon prime and Hulu and Peacock, and Max. Uh, and Max. Yeah, see, we can just go on and on and on. And that is so frustrating. And we don't have a true unified interface that allows us to easily navigate all of that. Now, here's where it becomes the ecstasy part. All, we need all of those things because there is so much amazing content that's available now. And I believe that content is available now only because... All of these networks were able to break free from broadcast television and regular cable and, and get away from from either enforced or perceived constraints that, that they yeah, had I mean, to work within. Either the gatekeepers are gone or there's lots more gatekeepers. You can look at it either way right. you like, right? But but there's there's more avenues. Yeah. Right. And and now there is more good quality television that I want to watch than I am actually able to watch. Oh, same. Yeah. I mean, if I think if we went around the room here and asked everybody, you know, what what was what is your current favorite show to watch? We would probably get, you know, 10 to 15 different answers and more and maybe more. But we're like a crowd of like minded, nerdy people, you know, it, and and yet we would be like we could all recommend things to each other that, that we have not seen. And that. And it's all good. Like, that's the part that I, I question, though, is at what point does the money run out? Like, we, we are only we are the ones paying for this content in, in the end. I mean, it, there's there's, you know, executives and gatekeepers making the decisions. But, it, it, you know, in the end, if they can't sell it to us, they're not going to pay for it. So when does that start to like do we I think you're right. We are in like the heyday of this now of course there's a, a strike happening right now that may actually be the answer to my my rhetorical question yep. <laughs> i was going to go a much different direction with it but it, it. but it does have to do with the the splintering is what i miss is monday morning going into work and everybody just saw dallas on friday night you know who shot jr right everybody uh, old enough remembers and now uh we definitely don't have that experience but i sat down with a couple of lovely people last night at the uh the wine stock and they were talking about Star, Star Trek Tra Strange New Worlds, which is a show I love. And I went, no, 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 I haven't seen it yet. And all of a sudden we all just went, oh. Yeah. So like the, yeah. the I, I ruined, they were 
were having fun till I sat down. Right. But I mean, I, it just that's that is often what happens, though, <laughs> Allison. It fair. wasn't about the fair. Fair. <laughs> I, I'll own that. But it was. But that's been lost, and I do miss that. And like, so I'm. I find that we're all evangelizing. Going, we go to our, our daughter's house, and we're like, okay, you need to watch a Silo. Okay, we'll sit here and rewatch the whole series with you just so we can talk about it. Yeah. And we've lost that. But it actually is all awesome. Yeah. Go ahead, Pete. The, the, oh, one, ahead, John, yeah. the one fear that I have is death by a thousand cuts. I have a few services that I pay for. And they're a, like, for example, so I have Disney, um, Apple Plus. So, you know, there's a lot of content there. Um, the one tip I want to offer is that, especially if you have an Apple TV, there are free apps. Um, those supported by commercials, like for example, I'm watching something on the CW, uh, Graham, if you're interested. Um, the only thing I don't like about that model is that they keep playing the same commercials over and over and over. I'm like, mix it up a bit to keep me interested. So that's my take. So the, uh, I think the key point you hit on is dilution, and that's, of course, double-edged sword. Right? Back in the day, it was, uh, you know, Carson was pulling 30, 35 million a night, and somebody's lucky to pull three, 3 million a night now on a, on a given show uh, on network. But all the various services, I mean, the, the quality of the program, particularly, I think, with Apple TV, some of their original programming is just off the charts. Good. Oh. It's, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Even the stuff that I I'm not particularly, you know, oh, I love that. Uh the I gotta admit that the quality is there. It's just not my thing. But um is the dilution. And then I know we talked about it previously on the show, and I can't think then of the name of it. It's either an app or a website, and it's like what's on or just some watch. just watch. Just watch. There you go. Just yeah, watch. Go find it. What? I mean, we what? never remember the name of it. Don't no. get old. It's bad for your memory. Yeah. Well, I, it's not the one I use. I use TV time. Yeah. Okay. So TV time. So, But, but just but watch one, just another watch one. TV you time, put yeah. in the name of the show you yeah. want, and it tells you it's on this streaming service or that one. And so. And you can track which episodes you've watched, right. which is the, the only way I know what to watch at home. Steve anymore. and I took it up a nerd level. We created an Airtable database for ourselves. <laughs> your, your Airtable database is what made me seek out an app. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I saw that and I'm like, oh, I could go down. No, no, this was not. This was a reflection on me. I'm like, I could go down this path. That doesn't look healthy. <laughs> Somebody else has solved this problem in a way that is acceptable to me. I just need to find if it. If anybody wants it, I have a blog post about it. You can have it for yourselves. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it, so um, I'm curious how many uh, show of hands on, on stage and feel free to join in in the uh, in the crowd here, too. How many people on stage have uh, cut the cord? Okay. So, yeah, uh, certainly, every, John, is, is that right? You're the only, you still pay for, like, cable, right? Yes, I do. Okay. So, uh, can we put your hands back up again? I just want to see. So, if you've cut the cord, put your hands up. I just, yeah. Okay. And now, if you haven't cut the cord, put your hands up. Just want to see. Okay. So, it, it's about... I don't know, 30% haven't and 70% have by my very accurate calculations. Now you need to ask the uh, bonus question. Take if you it. cut the cord, do you watch sports? Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, then that's the asterisk. It's like, how do you watch sports? So if you how, many the of the, how many of the people who said they still have TV is mainly because sports? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Like most oh, of yeah. them. <laughs> that was, oh, yeah, if you haven't cut the cord. Yeah, and, and watching live sports without... After having cut a, cut the cord, you kind of have to like d d you make your deal with your particular devil of choice that is your replacement for that. But it's half the price, so at least that you know with the Fubo and the YouTube TV and all that, it's half the price. Yeah, but just like just like having all the services is yes. now really complicates things for it, you. Oh, it's it's way more complex <laughs> having cut the cord. It's better, but it's way more complex. So, so. I don't know if this is. <clears throat> Legit or not, but a friend of mine and I, we split the cost of YouTube TV, and then I run one node off it by using channels. So um, I can watch YouTube TV on all my devices using channels, and we split the cost of as YouTube As long as you're TV. in the same general geographical area. We live down the get, street from each other. Yeah, you get away with A couple it. miles away, yeah. And yeah. then... And, yeah. And, and you, no, can't, you watch can't watch NBC, which I'm way. fine with that, I yeah, guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, but I can watch anywhere yeah, in the world on any topic. device yeah, because exactly. it shows up as my IP address at my house yeah. using channels. All right. So we're, we're, do, do we, we, we are out of time on that 
topic. Yeah, we, but we haven't voted yet. It is there, therefore it is time to vote. So, uh, what's that? It says, it, it says time, time to vote. vote. Yeah, I know. I have these automations that like, do it all together. It's like, it's, 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 the worst was testing them <laughs> and sitting there and watching it count down <laughs> because it didn't work the first time. And it was like, oh, it didn't turn over. Okay, why? Check that. Right. Okay. Back to the top. Yep. Here we go. Well, but I, need, but I did that. And then I needed the actual thing to know that it would work in production. See, 27 minutes. You'll never get back. Dave. 27 <laughs> minutes. Oh, and the worst was if I like got distracted or my Mac went to sleep. It's like, Oh, <laughs> good. Not good. Which as you might guess happens to me a lot. Do you have anything to add before we vote? No, I was just getting ready to vote. Yeah, go please. Vote. <laughs> so for me, better, better now because of Apple TV. And also I think even though all the different services, I think aggregate, I'm still paying less than I ever was with cable. Yep. John, better now? Worse? We'll just go down. So tell line. us, John, how do you feel? <laughs> About what? <laughs> just say yes. Yes. Now say no. No. Okay, so Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Sure thing. Um, I begrudgingly say we're better off because I love all the content we have. It's just frustrating keeping track of everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I vote yes. We more better. With, with, with no asterisk. No, that's way great. more better. Great. Much more variety. So yeah. you have to go. Yes. I would say way better. I could add an asterisk, but then I would have to go back in time and experience how I felt in 2005, because I know I felt an asterisk then too, but the gift of time sort of heals that wound. If you do that, go back and count how many shows you're really excited about then and how many are you really excited about now? Very good. I'm excited ah, about a lot more yeah. now. That's probably I mean, there true. was friends, but that was like, okay. And then you watch some other crap afterwards that you right. didn't care about because you were still watching the TV. Because it was still... Yeah, what yeah. was the song? Was 57 channels and nothing on? Was yeah. That yeah. Nothing to watch. <laughs> Springsteen. Yeah. That's right. Thank you, Dr. Dream. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's the end of the Mac Geek Gab Caucus. Now, there is more. It is far less organized. What you just heard was the uh, a, a fairly cohesive conversation. The more, of course, is our Stump the Geek section, where people from the crowd bring their questions, we discuss them. This is far less pleasant to listen to, I would think. But I didn't want to make that decision for you. There's no reason for me to make that decision for you. I have the audio. It's already mixed, at least as far as it goes. So I'm going to leave it here. But I wanted to give you the flexibility, the freedom to uh, at least know that this part of it was over. There is more fun, and I'll get out of the way. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for staying subscribed. All of those things. Thanks so much for checking out our sponsors. Again, that's Hopwater, H-O-P-W-T-R dot com slash M-G-G. And uh, we'll see where this goes. One more thing, though. Don't get caught. All right, we have a few minutes, and we have an extra microphone, and we have, when we have done these in the past, we have done uh, a little bit of Stump the Geeks, and you've got six of us up here. So if you have a question, first come, first serve. Yep. I don't have the microphone. I can't decide. So, I've, okay, I'll come and up. Talk, please talk like okay, straight sure. to the mic. Please, thank um, you. Is it? Uh, my name is Tom, ladies and gentlemen, and I use Tom a Mac. and and I am a Mac user. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Tom. Hi, Tom. Hi, Tom. <laughs> anyway, my question is: so I have my documents folders on an external drive. Can Time Machine be configured to back that up? Uh, yes. Yeah, the the answer is yes. Yeah. Yeah. You. You. It, it really is about what it is configured to exclude. Yeah. So don't yeah. Ex don't exclude that, right? Yeah. Typically, it would include anything, including in external drives, and you have to tell it don't back that up. Typically, if it's not already doing it, you need to go into the time machine preferences and just add that okay. volume, okay. and okay. it'll back it up. Okay. I have a question. My name is Pat Pokey. Hi, Pat. And I've been to six of these, and I love them to death. Amazing. Um, when you're writing in notes on an iPad and you're using a pencil, 
and you run out of paper, how do you get it to move up? It sounds like Allison might have the answer. I'm Good pretty question, sure you Pat, put two you. fingers on the screen and pull up. No? Can't do it with the pencil because it's busy writing. I think that's the point. I, I got a pencil. I got a pencil too, and I expected if I swipe up, yeah. it would swipe up. It doesn't. And I think, I think that's a, a problem with the UI. Okay, give him a second microphone. Yeah. Thank you. I think it depends on the app. Some of them okay. you can. Thank you for confirming. Oh, in notes. Yeah. Okay. You said notes. Yeah, never, so never mind. Your, your solution was correct, Allison. Use your, you have to use your fingers. Because your pencil is a pencil. If you, were, if you had a piece of paper on your desk, and you had a pencil in your hand, you wouldn't use the pencil to pull the paper up. You would grab the paper and push it up with, with a couple of fingers. Yep. It is exactly the same way. No yeah. yeah. You're saying two fingers doesn't swipe up? What? Linda just did it over here. So get together. Can we have like but the Battle Royale pencil, of iPad though. notes? <laughs> yeah. All right. don't, don't start below, start on the paper. Huh. It's like, it's like yours is gone, like a crane. Oh. Come on up, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have devolved, for anybody listening, into something that's equally uninteresting to you as it is to us. Yeah. That's right. Stop. So, so is it stumped? We're stumped. Michael has a yeah, question. Yes. Michael has a question. Yeah, Michael. Fill in. So I'd like to hear from the esteemed panel, from individual. What is the one thing that Apple is still doing that's driving you nuts? The one thing. So I'm going to leave that like a very open question. Six fish shakes coming up. <laughs> Sounds like you want to start. Um, fix Siri, for the love of God, fix Siri. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, my observation is from the hardware side. Uh, this is going to sound kind of weird coming for me because I just got a shiny new MacBook Air 15 inch, and this is a beautiful machine. I get like not infinite battery life, but my old machine that was Intel based, I maybe got two hours until I had to recharge. This machine will go over 10 hours. But what do so you want them to do now? Shaking? What do you want them to do now? What, what do you want them to stop doing? Um, my, I'm just going to offer an observation. I think they're moving away from... So when Steve got on board, he's like, we're going to have four quadrants. Right now, the product line, I think, is getting more and more complex, and it's making it difficult to make a decision. It's like, well, what's the difference between that and that? Now, sometimes they'll have a, you know, a chart that'll show, okay, yeah. this has this much and that much. But um, that's just my opinion. No, when, I, when I'm suggesting to people valid. what they should buy, I tell them just how much money do you have? <laughs> how much you got? How much yeah. you got? Let's that's have. how you pick out which one you want. How yeah. many? Adam, I don't. I, I would. I would concur on the Siri thing. I think Siri could be a lot, lot smarter, um, given the technologies we have. But um, probably the other one, and this is more just. I wish it was just. <laughs> did, did Siri more. just answered. <laughs> Siri just answered. That's awesome. Wow. Troy, I think Siri's cheating on you with Adam. <laughs> um, I, I feel like wait, wait, they wait, haven't wait. done enough with spotlights. Hey, Siri. <laughs> well, then what? She didn't even answer, though. Because I was trying to call her. Oh, no. Several, several phones and I... <laughs> Several phones and iPads in the room are now listening for you to, to follow on there. So, yeah. No, so, I think it's it's Spotlight. It doesn't drive me nuts, nuts, but I think it could do a lot more. Like, I think Spotlight Search could also be more intelligent and, and just better. And yeah. I don't think they've done much with it. Yeah. I, and uh, for me, it's mail is, is getting worse. It's getting slower. They are taking features, they are taking the extensibility away, which was sort of the saving grace of mail and, and of Dave. And so, uh, yeah, mail is not, it, it, I don't know, it's not Spark. going in a good direction. Yeah, I, I've always shied away from third-party mail clients because I don't want to get stuck in a box where I, now that developer isn't making it anymore for whatever reason, because I've been in that box several times. And so that's why I went with Apple Mail, and I've been happy for a long time, but it's it, the last year has not been good. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that. 
All right, so we've already shook our fist at Safari. No, We're no, gonna, no, Siri, or not Siri, Safari. Siri, what a Freudian slip. Siri, we, we've shaken our fist at uh, at Mail, both of which I, w- I would shake my fist at. So I'll bring in another one that really bothers me. Apple needs to get back to consistent, usable interfaces. It's a hot mess. Yes. Oh, my God. And, and I think, well, we, we should probably go to system settings then if we want to discuss that issue. That's the right? poster child right there. Anybody, anybody got trouble with system oh, settings? Yeah. <laughs> we don't have that much time. Mike, right. how? Where is... <laughs> We don't okay. have enough time for system settings. Yeah, Mike, okay, says, okay. Mike says no. So we don't. I don't take that one. But I don't have any trouble. I don't have much trouble. I don't think with Safari or with with uh, Mail. I'm sorry, but I'm just I mean, those aren't bothering me. Is well, Siri bothering you? Because because no. we haven't talked about Safari My, well, yet, except clearly in well, I, in subconsciously. Well, okay. Yeah. But what I, what I wanted to have Apple stop doing is having things flip that I had flipped the other way. Anybody ever had Wi-Fi calling turn off? Oh, yeah. Right? Why? Why is that turning off? I would never intentionally turn off Wi-Fi calling, but it, it, my, my uncle just posted in our Slack. He like, couldn't figure out this problem he was having, and so he goes, check and see if it turned off. Do you have a family Slack? No, no, oh. no. Steve's uncle is in my pod Slack. Slack. Okay, because yeah, so, I know no. I've, I've threatened to set up a family Slack, so I no, just no, that, to see that would be fine. I, I, if but I could have like a support Another group. example is I have never, ever, Slack ever, ever in mail, this will be a mail complaint, but it's in the turn the switch. I tell it I want my pod feet mail to be my default address. And a month or two will go by and I'll look down and note it's my Mac.com address. And why is it changing? I'm, I've never said it the other way. That's my, it's my smarter fish than shake. <laughs> So I will bring Safari into it because I'm a web developer and my office now, the phrase is Safari is the new IE. It really is. It's gone really bad. It's performance is down. It doesn't support a lot of the newer features. They're very slow to bring them in. So it's, it's, and so I think the broader thing that really frustrates me with Apple a lot of times is attrition. They bring out these great technologies like Siri, they pioneer this stuff, they bring it out and then it just, they let it languish. Yep. QuickTime's a great example of this, right? It so just let me ask Adam, slowly what do you went use away. instead of Safari? What do you like instead of Safari? <laughs> For development, Chrome. What, what is your daily driver browser? I still use Safari. Okay. Because I'm not <laughs> that crazy, but it frustrates me. <laughs> yeah. You know, for personal browsing, but for web development, I yeah. we have to, I so, have to use so Chrome for the dev this, tools and all the other things that are just better. While we're on the subject, another show of hands, because it's so much fun to be able to do this in real time with everybody together. How many people are not using Safari as your daily driver browser? Okay. So maybe, maybe to 10%. Yeah. 10, yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. What are you using? Dave, Jeff? I, I'm using edge. Yeah. Um, okay. And what keeps me off of Safari is the fact that Apple has basically sandboxed that system so much that a lot of these other pro tools add-ons that we put in to, uh, to now Chromium based browsers, we can't do on Safari example. I use Workona. And uh, and without Workona, for for those of you that don't know it, uh, at the very basic level, it's a uh, it's a tab manager, oh. but it's way way more. It's like full project management, and uh, and we don't have time. It's like it's like yeah yeah we just don't have time. But without that tool, I can't do what I do, and uh, Safari doesn't support it. Yeah, cool. Yeah, interesting. I'm a little worried uh, when the other browsers started to go Chromium that we're headed back to the IE ActiveX days, and that made me nervous. And it, it, you're shaking your head, but that is happening, right? Is people? No, are, no, I, I'm no but those browsers are supporting the, the new standards and staying ahead of the curve. Okay. And Safari's falling behind, and WebKit's falling behind. Yeah. Okay, so. okay, but <laughs> yeah, I'm shaking but, my okay, head because so maybe Michael it's the effect- introduced a fourth uh, 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 caucus topic. Oh, very, very. Well, by the way, because we are here answering listener questions, and yet we are back to the caucus thing without a clock running. So Michael did a great well, we job. We can't help but vote. <laughs> but I think I see what you're saying, Adam, is is it's not by an evil empire causing it. It's by it's somebody not keeping up. It's by attrition. Yeah. The other way. Yeah. Yeah. That's an interesting way to look at it. More, yeah, more listener questions. Yeah, absolutely. Linda, yeah, Stump the Geek. I'm sorry. We'll probably want that microphone back for oh, answers. Yeah. Oh. 
Go ahead, Linda. <laughs> okay, so um, occasionally, once in a blue moon, I lose an email from iCloud on my iCloud address. Now, when I'm saying iCloud, I'm using actually .me. That shouldn't matter. Um, so I sent an email to Ken Ray, who knows how to use a Mac. <laughs> he responded to me twice, and I didn't get the email. So we corresponded on chat, and I finally just gave him an off iCloud, you know, another dot X. Yeah. Uh, can, so I, so can I make Mac, a guess? In Mac Geek, you have 992. Pete and I were talking about <laughs> exactly this. App, Apple's iCloud spam filters are out of control. I, I, Steve, Steve is, in my, is in my favorites. And he's going, his mails are going into spam. Mails that I send to someone and they respond, they're going this into spam. This was not in spam. It never showed up? It never showed up. But that's no, also, period. could be spam filters. Like, Where? No, oh, no, 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 no. There are, there are layers of spam filters and things that are decided to be very terrible are just not and let Ken, to the mail Ken server. Ken is a known spammer. Let's be fair. <laughs> I mean, obviously. That's fair. It's, okay, I'm going to take it outside the spam world because... Sure. What you're experiencing is so frustrating, and I deal with it all the time. This is the most stupid thing. I will have emails that I never see, but I can go to another device that has the same email account and find it there. And then I reply to the person, and now that whole email thread shows up on the original device. So what it's so what it's worth, he was responding wait, to wait, wait. For what it's worth, he was responding to my email. Yeah, so I, I've it's had a, it work. Okay, interesting. Yeah, that way too. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No, you're up. Yep. Okay. What's your this? Name? I'm Steve. Talk into the microphone for me. Okay. Thank I'm you. I'm Steve. Oh, that's much better. Um, Bluetooth has been turned off, in, in unintentionally, on a Mac. You have no control over a wireless mouse. Mouse. How do you get Bluetooth enabled again? You got to buy a new Mac. Pilot Pete, ladies and gentlemen. No, you, I, you I had actually, this problem. I actually had this problem recently, and uh, oh boy, was it frustrating. So, what caused that problem? No one saw me. You can't prove a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, oh, that was a different one. I did turn it off, uh, turned off the Bluetooth, and then went, oh, yeah, duh. And I re rebooted it, and then it came on. But if rebooting doesn't work, you need a wired mouse, USB mouse. Nope, nope there's another answer. No wired mouse okay. is allowed. Let, let Adam take this. All right, Adam's, Adam's got it then. That's how I got it the second time. <laughs> yeah. Even though we bashed her earlier, use Siri. <laughs> what if you don't have Siri enabled on your, your phone. Mac? Hey well, Siri, turn on Bluetooth. Starting the original spec. It's, uh -oh. it's possible. Just got Are, on. I think he's actually testing this. It's possible you could do it with accessibility. But you can't get it open because you got. You don't have a mouse or a keyboard. Yeah, if you have no I/O. What do you mean? Who said you don't have a keyboard? You do have, you have a keyboard. keyboard and mouse oh, is Bluetooth. I, I, Wait, did I you have a keyboard? I think, I think what we heard from another listener, and I, I, I could just be making this up out of like sleep deprived delirium, uh, but it sounds really good, is reboot the Mac and wait, because it will offer to turn on Bluetooth for you. If you wait after it boots, yours did not do this. What you have to do is you can highlight your account with the left or right arrow key, because your Bluetooth keyboard is plugged in with your lightning cable. Thus, it becomes USB. Uh -huh. You type in your password. You press return, log in, press command space bar uh -huh. to get spotlight. Type in Bluetooth exchange. And the default choice on Bluetooth Exchange, it first of all realizes that Bluetooth Exchange, that Bluetooth is turned off. And the, the default option is in highlighted in blue, which is a return key, to Amazing. turn it on. And I saved my client uh, for buying a new... Yeah, I used to think I'm, that I'm having confused. listeners talk back was bad. This yeah. is great. But hang on, so Steve. Thank you, hang on, Steve. Steve. Why couldn't you have used Spotlight to open the Bluetooth Exchange with it plugged in via lightning cable when it was booted up? I did not consider that. <laughs> <laughs> they also, that, that, so I turn off Siri. Yeah. Siri yeah, can be Siri. potentially. 
<laughs> yeah, no, Siri's the right answer. And it's on. Yeah, they had been on the phone with Apple support, and Apple support was not able to successfully help them because they didn't realize she had not logged into her computer. Uh, she was still at the login screen trying to do oh, command space bar. Okay, That's okay, got you. That th we are out of time in the room here today. Uh, we're all around, and certainly for tonight and, and most of us, I think, through tomorrow. Come find us. Say hello. Ask us questions. We're going to ask you questions. That's the beauty of MacStock is everybody is just all together, and we love that. And so Learn. thank you to all of my panelists, to all, everybody here, Pete, Allison, Jeff, John, Adam. Thank you so much. We'll see you in two minutes. So we're going to go do the drone thing, and I'm going to hope that the FAA isn't around because I don't want to get caught. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Nice.